I'm bringing on uh, Steve Olsha, who is an expert when it comes to anything interview based. He runs his own uh, podcast, well, actually two of them. Uh, he does a course on training about how to get the most about being a guest on on summits or on podcasts, and he's had a ton of experience as a speaker on summits. Uh, and you're going to hear direct from him about his experience. So let me um, bring on Steve. I'm just unmuting you, mate, so you can talk. There we go. How are you doing, dude? Yeah, really well, mate. Uh, how have you good. been? Oh, good. You know, other than the world's longest San Diego winter, uh, you know, things things are good in the hood. <laughs> good stuff. Well, do you want to give, uh, for some people who may not know you, a bit of an intro about yourself uh, and, you know, your experience with, with summits and obviously, you know, interviewing people uh, for summits as well as your podcast? Yeah, yeah, man. So um, I've been online for a um, Pretty darn, pretty darn long time since uh, 1993 when we launched on CompuServe's Electronic Mall. Uh, so I've <laughs> been, been online for a long time and uh, launched one of the first fully functional e-commerce sites back in 95. And that site became liquor.com when I picked up that domain in 98. And uh, so lot, lots of things going on over 20 plus years uh, in the online world. And as you said, I got a couple of podcasts, Reinvention Radio. Uh, and beyond eight figures, uh, and I host um, uh, a live event called the New Media Summit. Uh, there we go, New Media Summit. And uh, and at the New Media Summit, we bring in forty top podcasters, and we give one hundred and fifty attendees the opportunity to meet them and and pitch them on who they are and what they do, and they literally get booked on the spot. Um, so, I mean, look. Long story short, uh, if you can think of a, a marketing initiative. Uh, that can be uh, tried and tested and leveraged uh, as far as the online world is concerned. Uh, I've certainly, I've certainly done it. I mean, I've invested millions of dollars over the years uh, testing down near every online marketing strategy known to humankind, from Google AdWords and buying keywords to, uh, you know, of course, SEO and blogging and uh, and, and summits and and so on. So really, really happy to be here and chat about the experience. Good stuff, mate. Well, yeah, it sounds like you've been uh, someone that's been involved in the online space right from the very beginning of, uh, you know, emails and then social media coming through. And uh, obviously podcast now is uh, something that's uh, a focus for you and uh, the power of just interviewing guests and bringing uh, that, building that relationship with uh, your guests that you have uh, involved in your, your speaking sessions. Now, I know that you are currently interested in planning to do a summit. Do you want to just tell us a little bit about why you've decided uh, to go ahead and, and create a summit now? Well, you know, it's um, so for, for one, I've done what I might call sort of offline summits from the standpoint of I've done uh, books that were compilations of different people's uh, contributions and so on, right? So like Internet Profits, P-R-O-P-H-E-T-S was one of the first books that I wrote. And that book was really the same sort of thing where I sat down with 25 of the world's leading online experts and shared a lot of their expertise in that book. And I've created courses where I have contributors and people come in and share their expertise uh, and include those in the courses, but I haven't really, I mean, I've been a guest on, on lots of summits, uh, but in terms of actually just digging in and doing it myself, I, I guess I kind of thought that there was a lot, well, you broke it down in a way for me that made it clear that it's just not as hard as I think I was making it out to be. So um, that's part of the reason why I'm moving in this direction of creating uh, really a, a true virtual online summit, kind of leveraging some of the things that I've done in the past in terms of getting people to say yes and sit down and share their brilliance, but really then repurposing it and using it in the way that it's truly intended, which is as an online summit, which is, of course, where your expertise comes in. And so having uh, been able to go through your training uh, and see how you do it, it's like, okay, this this totally makes sense now. I guess I, I guess I was just a little confused and maybe even just a little um, 
overwhelmed by what it takes to do one. But then I realized after going through your training that like, okay, this, this is, this is infinitely doable. So, uh, so yeah, that's, that's definitely on the, uh, on the horizon for me for sure. Yeah, it's very cool. And it's, uh, you know, you're not the, the only person that thinks that, well, there's a ton of work behind creating one of these virtual summits. And I mean, you're already doing an in-person summit, which, you know, yeah. a virtual summit compared to that is, uh, you know, right. uh, completely different. It's a lot easier, I would say, doing yeah. a virtual summit. Uh, and yeah, for sure. And e- even even now more so with the, the technology available that's, um, you know, one-click templates or one-click, so- one, all-in-one software versus, you know, trying to build out 18 different tools, which is what I used when I first launched uh, my virtual summit. But, and you have actually been uh, a guest speaker on uh, two of my past virtual summits. Do you want to just talk about that experience a little bit too? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, As I knock out my own headphones there, which is uh, after all the interviews that I do, you would think I'd learn how to keep my own headphones in. (laughs) But, um, but yeah, so I was on two of your summits, right? Yeah, that's it. But email list building, I think, was one of them, and uh, can't I think it was the, the other one, the sales conversion one, I believe. Sales conversion, yeah, yeah, really good stuff. And you know, look, I mean, obviously, from the standpoint of being a contributor, it makes really good sense um, in terms of credibility and authority and visibility. Um, you know, there's, there's really no faster way to put yourself in this this upper echelon, if you will, of uh, of experts, right? People that the, the 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 general community, if you will, looks at in in this expert type light, right? So when when I'm invited onto a, a summit, I, I actually look at it as an honor uh, and and a privilege. So you know, it's it shouldn't. It shouldn't be something where you look at it and you go, uh, man, you know, like, why would I do this? Do I really, you know, like what, what, what's expected of like, I'll just think about it from the standpoint of like almost no cost marketing where you come on, you share your brilliance and someone else just absolutely, you know, takes care of all the marketing and takes care of all the promotion and takes care of just putting you front and center. And you come on for a little bit, and of course, you know, you share it with your people as well. But then when you combine the power of all of the people who are on the summit sharing their brilliance, and of course, the host getting behind it in such a massive way as well. I mean, the exposure that you get is, I mean, it's second to none. And it costs you nothing more than a bit of your time. And how could you even, how could there be a better ROI on that? It's, 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 un, it's unbelievable, really, when you come right down to it. Yeah, it's uh, it's interesting when you when you create a, an event around something, and that's obviously a virtual summit is an event. But the marketing, the the, the shiny uh, you know object uh, that people are attracted to because there's thirty big name speakers talking about one specific topic, it it does create a really high opt in rate for uh, you know your lead magnets and things like that. But uh, it's interesting, like our story and how we got to know each other. Obviously, you said yes uh, to uh, speaking at our email success summit, which was our second virtual summit that we ran. And then I met you probably about three to six months later in Austin. Mm-hmm. I think we were at a um, maybe at a mastermind or something, but. Yeah, you know, it's uh, it's funny how the world begins to to get much much smaller, and you begin to play at a much higher level, and connect with really awesome people of you know of all walks from from a business perspective, personal development stuff. I mean, like you name it, um, there there are amazing people that you can connect with through these summits, both as a guest and of course as a host. And and one of the things that I like to look at the summit like. I, you know, when you think about it, if you have, you know, 10 or 20 or 30 experts coming on to share their, their brilliance and, and their insight and their expertise and their experience and their knowledge and their trials and tribulations and whatnot as it relates to a particular subject, and you have a, a number of people sharing that insight around this particular subject, you know, some of them who have been in the game for 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, whatever, that's like a, you'd be hard pressed to find a a college 
like a program where you can get that much information in such an expedited period of time from people who actually live and breathe what it is that you want to do. And, and, and so I, I actually compare the knowledge that you can gain through a summit to literally what you would see if you go and you spent two years in college or, or even four years, right? Because you'd have to go through all the other classes that you don't need in order to get the information and education that you actually want. Whereas in a summit, it's just like it's it's like um, it's like a hyper fast degree in that particular subject. And so, you know, on one hand, you look at it and you go, my God, you know, like, do I really need to hear from all of these people? The answer is, you know, maybe not all 30. But even if you just took really great notes and you implemented what you learned from five or 10 or, you know, a, dozen of them. I mean, my God, it could absolutely change the trajectory of your business and, and of course, your life, right? So I think people nowadays, it's funny because obviously things kind of ebb and flow. And I think more nowadays than ever, people really do see the value of online summits, especially if it's, if, if it's a subject that's near and dear to your heart. Like, I mean, you've done lots of different types of summits over the years. But I remember when I was on your email list build summit, I mean, if you want to build your email list, what what better, faster, more time efficient, cost efficient way to do so than to learn from people who are already doing it. And they're all focused on that same subject. I know I'm rambling, but my God, you know, I mean, that's just, again, I know things have been flow, but I think right now more than ever, we're kind of back up on that up curve, you know, that uptick. Or people are really understanding that as long as the people that you have on are aligned and you do a subject, you know, you focus on a subject that is near and dear to your heart, it elevates you as the expert in that space in sort of that reporter like fashion where now you become the, the hub of the, you know, sort of at, the, at the, the, you know, how the spokes of the wheel connect, you become the hub of that wheel and that whole world, that whole universe points directly towards you as the being as being that facilitator. Yeah, it's it's really interesting you say that, like just that uh, ability to connect everyone, and uh, or just go back to how how we met again, like meeting in Austin at that mastermind, and at that mastermind, it was some of the you know top entrepreneurs around the world uh, in the online marketing space, and there was I don't know maybe fifteen of us, and I think five of the people there had been on either my first or the my second summit, and uh, the guy who was hosting it had been on on my first summit and then at by the end of uh that mastermind but obviously built relationships got to know you a bit deeper now we've done something or, or stayed in touch uh since 2016 since that first event that we did together yeah. um met it, each other in person we did then another summit together and you know we've been um helping each other out and and looking at different ways we can work together uh, since then. And, you know, obviously really thank you for coming on live now and <laughs> sharing uh, this as well. But it's, it's amazing. Like, I'm, I'm from Australia. Uh, so to be able to connect with some of uh, you know, the, the top experts or minds in the world and then actually meet them in person as a host and build that relationship uh, from the other side of the world, doing a virtual summit is just crazy, I suppose, for yeah. me. Yeah, you know, and and again, that is the beauty of, of course, where we are in the online world. Is it doesn't, it doesn't matter where you are or where the people are that you would want to have on your summit. And reality is, you can be in, you know, in any corner of the earth there. And as long as you've got an internet connection, I mean, you're you're certainly good to go. And and you're, I mean, you're exactly right. I mean, so many of the people that we've had on, I mean, even like through the podcast, like where you mentioned radio or beyond eight figures, you know, I mean, we've had people on, uh, on our shows who live, I mean, all across the globe. Right. So it's the same thing with the virtual summits. I mean, you can sit down with literally anyone who lives anywhere, um, and be able to have them share their brilliance with, with your audience. But then at the same token, it works the other way around, which is people anywhere, across the globe, then they have the same ability to access this knowledge through your summit, right? So not only do you, you know, can you attract people and develop real relationships with these experts from across the globe, but then people from across the globe who may not be familiar with them as well, then have access to these people 
who you've introduced them to through through your summit. So it, it really does cut both ways. Yeah, yeah, it's a it's it's an interesting time. Uh, and you said about the trajectory before. I think we are moving into a space where. Uh, this is going to become more and more powerful and, and different ways and different versions, I suppose, of doing a virtual summit and how that can uh, be leveraged. But podcast as well, like you look at a, a virtual summit and how it's just a five day event, uh, you know, with a promotion window of say a month, but then what, what are you doing for the rest of the year? And I think, you know, podcasting is a, is a great complement uh, in terms of skill sets uh, to a virtual summit. Uh, and obviously, you've got a ton of experience there. So I'd love for you to maybe share some of those skills that you've learned uh, via podcasting with interviewing and so forth that can be transferred to a virtual summit. Yeah. So, and, and you're right. I mean, podcasting certainly, I believe it complements virtual summits um, in, in so many ways. Um, number one, it gives you the opportunity to really hone your interview skills, right? I mean, having your own show gives you the opportunity to really sit down with people, interview them, be able to cut to the meat of, you know, really what it is that you want them to be sharing with your audience. So that's certainly number one. Number two, as you think about driving traffic to your business and driving traffic to your summits, you know, how, how are you going to do that? I mean, putting together a summit is, is great. And, and it, in and of itself, you know, you've got the, the people who participate sharing that. And, and of course, that's a great way to drive visibility. But beyond that, what are you going to do to drive visibility to you and, and your business? Um, and that's certainly one of the reasons why I'm so bullish on the podcasting uh, space right now. And actually, I've been podcasting since 2009. So <clears throat> quite, quite a long time, actually, going on uh, over 10 years that I've been podcasting. And there, there really is no better way to drive highly targeted traffic to what it is that, that you're doing and really establish yourself as that go-to expert in your niche than, you know, through, through podcasting, right? So I think the two really do go hand in hand quite nicely. And of course, it's another platform. And if you're trying to get folks to, to come on to your summit, you know, one of the ways that you could sweeten the pot is to say, you know, and you don't even have to do two interviews. I mean, you could literally say potentially, you know, hey, after the summit is done and released and we move beyond that, I'm going to re-release our interview on our podcast, right? Which is something that you could do to give them double the exposure. And sometimes people need a little bit of a, an extra incentive to say yes to something. Uh, and that's a, that's a really good way to to get them to kind of peek up their eyebrows and go, hmm, that that's interesting. So if I do this one interview, I actually can now get twice the exposure, not just on the summit, but then you're going to re-release it as an episode on your podcast. That's pretty interesting, right? So, um, so there are lots of different ways to leverage that one interview, and of course. Putting those folks, uh, putting that audio onto uh, on a, to a podcast is uh, is another great way to to think about it as well. Sure. How are you? Uh, how are you getting? Uh, I mean, obviously, been podcasting for a long time, pretty much uh, since pod podcasting became uh, or really got started. So, what what tips would you give for people to try to f uh, nail their dream speaker for for their summit? Yeah, you know, it's it's definitely going to be. Um, uh, and I'll put it this way. If there are some big name folks that you want to have on your summit, you know, there's definitely going to be a, a little bit of a competition, right? To get them to dedicate their time and energy to, to your endeavor, right? So you just know that they are bombarded with people asking them to give up their time, right? To be interviewed for whatever their platforms are. I mean, that's, talking about with podcasts and summits and blogs and live events and so on and so forth. There's no shortage of demand um, on their time. One of the easiest things that I have found uh, is if you, the, the term that I use is triangulate. And so the idea here is how can you reach that person through other people? Right? I mean, you talk about the six degrees of separation, one degree of separation, like whatever it is or whatever degree of separation you have from that person, one of the easiest ways to get onto their radar uh, is to try to figure out 
who the people are that surround them that you can then ask for warm introductions, right? Because just coming out of the blue and saying, hey, I've got the summit, would you like to be on it? You know, that's that's going to be tough, right? So the more you can look at things from a, from a warm introductory standpoint, uh, the higher the degree of success you're going to have. The other thing that you can do, and what I have found to be really, really effective, is to get one of the dominoes to fall from the standpoint of, you know, let's say hypothetically you want to do a, a summit on podcasting. And so if you wanted to do a, an online summit and talk about podcasting, you know, you think about some of the bigger names that people know, you know, myself, Johnny Lee Dumas, Pat Flynn, uh, you know, Amy Porterfield, I mean, et cetera, right? I mean, we can just run through all the usual suspects there. And so one of the things that you can do, which works really, really well, is to focus on one of those big dominoes, so to speak. And when you then approach others to say, hey, you know, we've already got blank committed to doing this. And we're also talking to blank, 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 and blank. Doesn't mean that they're committed, but we're also talking to them. You know, we'd love to have you as a part of this. It then adds validity and credibility to the, the substance, if you will, of what it is that you're creating. So what I have found is you can do it two ways. You can just start with, hey, we're talking to X, Y, Z, A, B, C about being on this with us. Would you like to be a part of this? And once you do get one of those people to fall, just simply to say, look, we've already got blank committed and we're talking to blank, 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 and blank. Would you like to join us? That, that can be really effective as well. Great tip there. I like uh, the analogy of just uh, hitting those dominoes and getting that first uh, big domino to fall. Yeah. <laughs> it's almost like uh, the, the chess game, you know? Yeah. Uh, heading towards that king, but you've got to nail and, uh, a couple of other pieces on the board first. <laughs> yeah, for sure. For sure. And it, works, and it works really, really well. That's how I've done my books, of how I've done other uh, live events. And so, yeah, that's how it works. Great, man. Well, so... Virtual summits now, like what has what's what's getting you excited about uh, the virtual summit uh, space? And uh, I mean, from when you first heard about virtual summits to now, like why is it now that you're looking to move in that direction? Mm -hmm. So you know, it it boils down to one word more than anything else for me, and that that is relationships. And what what I've become really clear on is that. Nothing is more important in business than the power of the relationships that you develop. And so there is, you know, I mean, look, there are other options, but there, there is no better, faster, easier, more profitable way that, that I'm seeing right now to develop a lot of really high quality relationships quickly and establish yourself as the go-to expert in that particular niche than you can with, uh, with, with, uh, with the summit. So it's, it's interesting. As I said, I've tried darn near every marketing strategy known to, to humankind over the years. And, and the summit is still, it just keeps coming back to there's, there's nothing that's more effective. And so um, uh, that's that's why I'll be uh, jumping into this mix here uh, in the next. Uh, I think we got it slated here for the end of the year, uh, but I'm going to be jumping right uh, into this mix because uh, it it helps to build uh, the visibility. It certainly helps to build the credibility and the authority, and and it's and it's a good revenue generator. So um, I'm seeing it now. I didn't I didn't see it before, but uh, again, thanks to your guidance there man and through the course and i'm really being able to uh, seeing how all the pieces fit together uh and it, it makes it makes a lot of sense good stuff man well yeah like you you're inside virtual summit academy obviously you're uh someone that's that's preparing to do one at the end of the year what would you say to people or someone that's watching that might be considering or asking themselves like why should i join virtual summit academy uh i mean number one you'll be in great hands with liam Right. I mean, if you're going to learn how to do something, you want to learn how to do something from someone who has actually done it and has the track record to, to, to speak from. But also, you know, you've uh, obviously 
mm, through trial and tribulation and a lot of the, you know, 15 odd summits that you've done. I mean, it's just like you, you figured out what works and what doesn't work. And so now why on earth would you want to try to figure that stuff out on your own, right? And everything that you include uh, in the training really just streamlines, streamlines that process uh, in an unbelievable way. So, you know, reality for me, as I said, is you, you've got to be creative nowadays. You, the days of just putting up some social media posts and getting, you know, people to follow you. I mean, it just, it just doesn't work that way anymore. anymore. With email open rates on the decline and, you know, people not really reading blogs anymore. It's like, what, what are you going to do? You have to do something. And for the rest of us mere mortals, right, who don't have 10 million followers on Instagram or whatever it is, they're like, you got to do something here. And so you can't just sit back and wait for people to find you. You've got to be a, a bit aggressive in terms of creating that visibility for yourself. And one of, one of the most beautiful things about doing the summit uh, is that your partners really do create visibility for you. And, and that's priceless. So I just, like I said, at this point, I can't imagine why, especially if you're starting from scratch or you've got a five figure business, you're looking to get to six figures, uh, or if you've got a low six figure business, and you're looking to grow that pretty tough to find something as I've, as I've said now that that's more cost efficient and, and time effective to, to really grow your business. So big fan, man. Awesome, awesome. I'm a big fan too. So uh, I'm sure a lot of people by the end of this or after talking, listening to you for 30 minutes as well, uh, probably big fans too. Uh, now, but just to wrap this up, is there anything else uh, you want to share with uh, people today? Um, well, you know, again, the, the fact of the matter is that your first go at anything is always going to be the most difficult. And it's certainly going to get easier as you continue to move you know, things for my first podcast episode was far from great, right? But looking back, I wouldn't be able to get to the second one without the first one, wouldn't be able to get to the third without the first and second, et cetera, et cetera. So if you're, if you're feeling the vibe about, uh, you know, jumping in and working with Liam, all I can tell you is that you're in good hands. And I've known Liam now for, uh, for a number of years. Um, and I only support those who I believe in uh, and trust. And uh, and I wholeheartedly trust Liam, and and I know he's the best in this in this space. Just jump in with Liam and, and VSA, uh, you you won't go wrong. Trust me on that. Legend, mate. All right. Well, I'll let you run, and we'll we'll see you later. Cheers, Dave. All right, boss. Take care.